Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do a small Q&A chat with me video while I fold laundry and I don't want to take the credit for this because I actually got this idea or inspiration from my bestie Brittany. She just did one of these on her personal channel and I thought that would be great to answer some questions and fold some laundry because um, I have a lot of laundry to fold. It's currently 8.30 p.m. My kids are asleep. My husband's working from home, doing some things at the computer. So, per oh, no, I lied. It's 9.40 p.m. <laughs> Not 8.30, 9.40. So I'm going to go ahead and start folding and answering some of you guys' questions. So one of you guys asked me nicknames I had growing up. Um, honestly, the only like name I've ever had is Danny. Danny is obviously not my full name, and it's my parents didn't just name me Danny. Um, and also, my little brothers used to call me Nanny with an N instead, and I was I was called that for a really really long time. I think till they grew out of it, and that's what they would call me, Nanny or Danny. That's always been my nickname for as long as I could remember. <laughs> So one of you guys asked me how old I am and how long I've been married. I am 25 years old and I've been married for five years. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm still pretty young, young mama. Okay, I was asked, how do you find time to have dates or spend time with your significant other? So I will say I'm not perfect in this and sometimes we lack spending time together and it's really tough because we do have two kids. But I am very fortunate to have help around me. My mom is a huge help. She watches my kids when we go on dates. I also do have a babysitter on call. Well, not on call. Like, she doesn't just come when I say it. But I do let her know ahead of time if my mom isn't available. And she watches my kids, and I do pay her. So we have options to go out. So we try to make a rule of going out at least once a month on a date. Um, you know, like, movie or restaurant or something like that. And then... On Friday nights or Saturday nights, we try to have, we try to put the kids to bed really early and have like a movie night and just off of our phones, off of social media and hang out together and catch up because you could really get caught up with the flow of everything and the routine and then you forget to spend time together and you're not communicating with each other and that has happened to us and we find ourselves fighting a lot, arguing, you know, just very stressed out with just life in general and we take it out on each other so what works for us is just quality time together and yeah just we make the time whenever we can either we ask my mom to help us with the kids we have a sitter or we um stay in sometimes put the kids down to bed early and just hang out at home and just reconnect with each other Someone is so someone's curious to know how old my husband is. My husband is four years older than me. He's 29. Still pretty young. Got some swag going on. <laughs> um, are you going to have more kids? Um, only God knows that. I don't know. But we would like to have another kid. We would like to have one more. And that's about it. I don't think we would ever consider a fourth. I think that's where my husband draws the line. <laughs> Okay, when you have another baby, is there a gender you would prefer over the other? First off, I want a healthy baby, regardless of the gender. That's all I want is just a health, healthy, happy baby. But if I could choose the gender, if it was up to me, I would choose a little girl. Just because I love the idea of sisters. I didn't have a sister growing up, so it was really, really tough for me to just be on my own and just be me. And... I don't know, I've always liked the idea of having a sister, a best friend, and I really want to give that to Amelia if I could pick the other gender. I don't know, I, and it may sound a little selfish that I wouldn't want a boy for Ethan, and the reason is because I feel like boys, and I could be wrong, of course, but I do have two brothers, but I feel like boys, they kind of just like meet people at school or in college, and those are their, like their brothers for life, you know, like, they're bros. Well, I feel like girls, it takes them a really hard time to find friends and connect. And I just really want Amelia to have that sister who's her best friend. I don't know, I just feel like guys or boys have it a little bit easier in that sense. Not saying that boys don't need attention and a best friend. Not saying that. Just, I don't know. I guess for me, and I'm speaking on, on behalf of myself, like my experience. I felt so alone growing up without a sister. I would really like to give that to my daughter. 
So that's why I would like a girl. But if I have a boy, I would be more than happy. She'll have two boys to protect her and to be her best friends. So I would be over the moon with a boy as well. Okay, someone asked, how do you find time for yourself being a stay-at-home mom? Um, I don't really find time to myself. My husband works full-time. He works long hours. And on top of that, he is studying. So it was really, really tough for me because I'm with my kids all the time. And um, the only way I do create time for myself is creating content for you guys editing, sitting down and doing something that I personally enjoy doing. I love connecting with other moms and other young women or older women. I don't care. <laughs> and just talking to you guys and I don't know, making friends is awesome. So that's a way I get time to myself. I also make sure I put my kids on to bed at like 7.45 just so I can watch some TV, um, take a bath, hang out on my own and spend time with my husband when we can. So those are the only ways I do make time for myself. I try to be pretty active in my life. In other words, I try to hang out with friends a lot. I try to leave the house, not stay like in all the time because I feel like that really affects me sometimes. So I think the, that's just the way I make time for myself and do what I like. And I just have to have my kids tag along with me sometimes. But um, I manage. I think I manage. <laughs> okay, so someone asked, do you like the age difference between your kiddos? Um, not really, but here's why. The reason I don't like it is because I feel like it's a little bit much. It's almost three years and a half of an age difference, and I wish it was like two and a half. Um, just because I feel like Ethan and Amelia are in such different stages of, in their lives that they have like nothing in common. They're super cute together, and they do play sometimes, but most of the time they're just fighting. So I wish I would have them closer in age, but that didn't happen. So I would say for me, if, I, if it were up to me, I would have had Amelia maybe a year or so earlier than when I did. But obviously that didn't work out. <laughs> so one of you guys asked, what's your favorite thing about fall? All of it. The weather. It's mainly the weather, honestly. Fall weather and fall vibes are amazing. Like being able to wear chunky cardigans and leggings with riding boots and just I don't know all of that just the coziness is amazing for me I, I love that alone I love going to the pumpkin patch with my kids um I'm your, your basic girl I don't know I, I just like it I really just like the coziness of it just being able to dress up and cover up and not have to be sweating all the time that's what I mainly love about fall okay so I actually get this question asked a lot in my comments and DMs um I was just wondering, okay, so one of you guys asked, I was just wondering who in your family does Ethan get his red hair from? So, obviously I don't have red hair, my husband doesn't have red hair, Amelia has no red hair at all, so where does my kid get it from, right? Like, all of you guys are so intrigued to know where Ethan gets his red hair from. So, both of us have family with red hair. My husband actually, you guys look really close enough has still some reddish hair on his beard. He was a blondish, reddish hair baby growing up. So he did have some red hair when he was a baby. Um, he didn't have it by the time he was Ethan's age. So we actually think Ethan's red hair may be permanent um, just because it's still pretty red. Um, so he had family with, with red hair, my husband. And then I do have an aunt with red hair. So my dad's sister has red hair. So that's where we get our red hair from. Okay, so I've been asked this a few times too. If you have a third baby, what would you name her or him? Um, I'm not gonna say what I would name her or him because I kinda wanna keep that a surprise. But I will say that it's it has to start with the letter E just because I kinda kept that with both of my kids. So obviously the third has to have the letter E in the name like start with the letter e so yeah but that's still something we're talking about we we're pretty sure we have the name for a little girl we aren't positive for a little boy yet but um i promise when the day comes i will tell you guys what the baby's name is okay this is also one of my biggest questions is are you bilingual if so are you teaching your children yes i am my kids speak 80 percent spanish and maybe 20 percent english um my son just pretty much figured out how to speak English more fluently now because of school but at home 90% of the time we speak in Spanish it's just something I really want my kids 
to learn and to hold on to and I really want them to be able to communicate with family my parents my family all speak Spanish like they barely speak English same goes for my husband's family so it's very important for me that my kids have a relationship with their families know where their you know where their roots are from like their culture and where they're from and you know we travel a lot back to our country and and we have family, we have people. I would hate for my kids to just not be able to communicate and form relationships with our family and friends because of a language barrier. So for me, it's important that my kids learn Spanish. So yes, we speak Spanish almost full time at home. Um, so you guys have asked me if I'm gonna do a nursery tour video. So I do wanna do a tour of both of the kids' rooms. Um, I just haven't gotten around to it, really. But I will be filming that soon. I hope sooner than lady, later. But yes, I will be showing you guys Amelia and Ethan's rooms. Someone asked, life as a YouTuber, pros and cons. By the way, girl, I love watching your videos. Thank you. Um, pros. Pros is honestly connecting with all the amazing people out there. And just making friends, collabing with, like, I don't care who I collab with. I could collab with a smaller YouTuber or a bigger YouTuber. I don't care if you're friendly and you're nice and you're, you know, you reach out to me for the right reasons, just like to be my friend and stuff, and I will collab with you. I love collabing, making friends, talking with you guys, connecting, and creating content, I think is the best part of it. And I, and I know I say this a lot, like, oh, creating content, and and meeting new people but that's my genuine answer like I love connecting with other moms and making friends so that's my number one reason that I created YouTube to begin with and that's the biggest the biggest pro is that I've made and formed relationships for life and I have gained some of my best friends through YouTube that I would have never ever have gained before so just to throw out a few aside from Vanessa and Brittany because I didn't know them prior to starting YouTube but I have a friend Jennifer we're super good friends Olivia um, my friend Heather like I have just made a bunch of friends that now I can call super close friends to me in my life and these ladies have impacted my life in a positive way that I would have never have met through YouTube and not only that a lot of you guys DM me on Instagram and we chat from time to time and that alone is amazing so that is the biggest pro with uh, having with doing YouTube and then one of the cons um I don't really address this a lot just because I don't like to give people like this the time of day or just a lot of attention even though of course it, it does affect me to an extent and it does bother me but there is a lot of hate going around on YouTube and a lot of people who want to put you down and want to question your abilities as a human, as a mother, want to make you feel like crap, you know. There are people like that who, you know, at the end of the day you can never win and they'll never like you because they've decided not to like you just because you put yourself out there. And that's really hard sometimes because it's like, I think it's human nature to want to be liked. I think like... If someone doesn't like us, we want to know why, we want to know what we can do to improve to satisfy this other person. But I've learned with YouTube that that's just not possible and at the end of the day I don't know these people. And just because they watch a 10 minute or 15 minute video of me doesn't mean they know me and they have no effect in my life. And I don't know who they are at the end of the day. They just talk crap, don't like me, and try to tear me down as a mom and as a person and as a woman. And at the end of the day I just feel sorry for them so but it is hard sometimes it is hard because you just wonder like why why can't someone like you why do people talk badly of you you know and and you just question yourself and I think that's obviously the purpose of all this hate is for you to feel bad and for you to question yourself and for you to eventually quit what you're doing and I think that's the biggest con of it all if you don't have thick skin which in no means do I have thick skin guys if anything YouTube has given me thicker skin because I was a super sensitive still am a super sensitive person till this day I'm you know, I take things very personal sometimes and I I dwell on things for a really long time but if you don't have thick skin or you can't handle the criticism because you're gonna get it regardless you could be freaking Mother Teresa and you'll get the hate um you know that's that's just the hardest part and at the end of the day if I become unhappy making and creating content on YouTube and 
it's just not good for my mental health i would quit if it got to that but at the end of the day i really enjoy this and i think there's a lot more pros that come with creating youtube than cons if you can just ignore those haters that are gonna hate regardless and say whatever comes to their head then you're good to go i think you should stick to what you're doing and you know, I know a lot of people don't like this and say, well, why would you block people? I'm like, well, why would I not? Why would I let people bash me as a mother and as an individual? Like, it's like, hello. So yeah, just block people and move on with your day. <laughs> this is the last question I'm going to answer. Advice on maintaining a healthy marriage or healthy relationship. Um, my relationship by no means is perfect. We have a lot of flaws, a lot of issues, things we need to work on as a couple and as um, as individuals. But I think for us, what works is knowing our love languages. So if you guys haven't read the book, Love Languages, you guys should totally read it. It will really help your marriage. It helped mine. Um, so I did read the book and it's basically identifying our love languages. And, um, and I know that's, I think a lot of people give that advice, but it really does work because I had heard people say that and I was like, oh, I don't want to read a book. But when I did, it really, I feel, um, made us understand each other a lot more and just identifying, you know, what we, we appreciate. So I need to give him what he wants or what he needs and he needs to do the same for me, you know, and at the end of the day, what I may need, he may not need and vice versa. So it's just kind of identifying that for us. That really works. Quality time is super important. Open communication is probably the most important thing in a relationship. Like if we don't communicate, we immediately have issues. Like we need to be able to communicate everything we're feeling. Um, <clears throat> and I think sometimes it's really hard to sit down and communicate or put things into words. Uh, but I think communication is probably one of the most important things in a marriage. Um, talking things out, no one's perfect. I'm definitely not not perfect. I could be a better wife. I could he could be a better husband. We could all improve. Um, and also, I think something that really helps my marriage that may be a little bit controversial, and a lot of people may not agree with this. And I hope my words aren't put out of context, of, and you guys don't take it the wrong way. But um, we both have set ourselves to this mentality where divorce is not an option with reason, of course, like abuse, infidelity. Things like that, you know, like obviously those are reasons to get a divorce, you know. But we both believe in like this is not an option for us. And if things go wrong or go south in our relationship, we will work it out. Like we will find a way to work it out. Um, now, I'm not saying this goes for everybody. I know there are relationships that just don't work out. And I would never suggest anyone to stay in a relationship just for kids or just because you vowed to be together. No. But this is what works for us is that we don't have that mentality of, well, if things don't work out, then we could always get a divorce, you know? And I feel like when you kind of have the option of divorce and you're just like, well, I could get a divorce if I wanted to. I'm sure I could. If I, was, if I wanted to, I could. I I'm, could do whatever I want, right? But we that's just not an option in our marriage there are things for us that would make us break up of course like there are certain things for me that i wouldn't tolerate and wouldn't i feel like i wouldn't forgive same for him so if we cross those lines then of course divorce would be an option for us but when it comes to just communication sometimes you fall out of loving your relationships I, i've been through it you know we have had so many ups and downs in our marriage um I wish maybe one day I'll make a video on it, but we have gone th through so much because we've been together for almost nine years. We were kids basically when we, we started dating and all of that. So we have been through so much as a couple and there was a point that our marriage almost didn't work out. But um, I think just keeping that mentality that you're going to work it out no matter what and you know what it's okay to get help and seek a third opinion and um you know maybe go to your pastor and get help i think bible study really has helped our marriage um talking to older people who've been married for a longer time has really helped my marriage and does um knowing that sometimes you can't do it alone you know like 
you can't fight for your marriage alone you need help sometimes i think that's helped my marriage a lot and again we have gone through seasons in our lives where things just don't work out like we are just don't we don't have the patience for each other we don't tolerate each other we don't communicate with each other and that is normal that doesn't mean i don't love my husband that doesn't mean i don't want to fight for my marriage it just these are these are normal things in life you know um but i think just keeping a mentality that we will work through anything and through it all again i hope no one takes that out of context and thinks i'm saying no one should get a divorce no one should get separated that's really bad that's not what i'm saying of course there are reasons in life where people do get divorces and they're they are justified um just that we always try to uh, keep that mentality of we will fight for this marriage just like any like i guess for me it's it's like this as a mom i would fight till death for my kids like i would do whatever it takes like you'll have to kill me first to get to my children i think the same goes for marriage or at least for my marriage it's like you know i will fight till the end for my marriage until i have i can say look i tried i really i tried everything i could and it didn't work out and then i'd be like okay i could call it quits i think keeping that mentality of just working through it all and just communicating and seeking help when it's needed is what's helped my marriage and i'm just speaking for myself this is what works for us i don't have a perfect marriage i have a lot of flaws in my marriage a lot of things i could work on as a wife and as a woman and same goes to my husband but um just trying to have open communication quality time and seeking help when it's needed and also seeking god because that's what has kept us together for this much time and i hope for the next 50 60 years uh but yeah anyways that just got really sappy but it's just the truth i want to be honest with you guys um but yeah <laughs> and actually i'm going to answer one more question because i feel like i just want to end that on a different note um favorite colombian dish so my favorite colombian dish which I don't know how to make yet perfectly. I know how to make some things, which is bandeja paisa. It's basically like rice, beans, chorizo, um, a fried egg. What else is in it? Avocado. But anyways, guys, I'm going to end this video and I'm going to finish folding this little bit left. And I'll see you guys in my next video. This was so much fun. And let me know what you guys think in the comments and leave me some questions and talk to me and all that. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.